Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marketing Watch House and welcome back on Google Ads plus Python tutorial and this is the third series when we go and try to do something something interesting and smart there. So we already built our the setup which contains the developer key, the access token and all this stuff. And there is also a test code that you can just run and have a look. And by the way, for those who didn't know that one, it does not change anything, it just downloads the report. And uh, I also had people asking me in the comments like, uh, what do you think is gonna be like the most like common thing to use it for? What should I shoot for? Should I go for bidding? And my answer would be not exactly, unless you like absolutely sure what you're doing. I would say bidding is not the most interesting or smart thing to do with Google Ads Python script. First of all, because bidding usually is done on a higher level and it only needed for a very specific amount of keywords and it can be basically done in Google Ads scripts, which does not require you to do a lot of deployment and stuff. Second of all, there is a TROS and TCPA which kind of covers most of the cases. But the API one allows you to do the reporting on a much bigger level. It allows you to create new instances, new keywords, new ads, creates your cross negatives, new campaigns, changing settings, a lot of stuff that is much simpler to do in, uh, in the Python than it's do in the Google Ads scripts. And before we go to that interesting stuff, what we need to do first is to go through the code that we already know, uh, and we already tried, and try to understand what it consists of. And the most interesting stuff about it is how to change it to make it work for you. So today we're going to talk about the reporting, how to make the reports in a, with a Google Ads API. So this is the code from my last usage, which is called Google Download Keywords from Account. And this one is from examples. It just downloads keywords to your account. Just a small reminder that we have the main function uh, that have a client uh, that is coming through our init file and it gets service, Google Ads service with version five. And then the interesting stuff happens. So to get the reports from Google Ads, there are a lot of different ways to do that. And in majority of the cases, of course, you might wanna use the BigQuery, but in, in, in this case, we directly query stuff from Google Ads. And the benefit of it is that it's free. You don't actually have to pay for it. It doesn't matter how big your account is or how much you download, unless of course you hit the limit, which is unlikely to happen. But the thing that is here, it's not SQL. It is kind of SQL, it's SQL based language that is called uh, Google Ads Query Language or GUCL. And this is the updated version of query language. It used to be AWQL. And if you do opt, uh, automation with Google Ads scripts, or you've seen my videos about Google Ads scripts, that actually the Google Ads scripts is using AWQL, sorry. It, it used AWQL, which is a previous version. And uh, even I get confused, but this is important stuff, guys, is that you should not be confused which one you need to use. For API, we use Guckel. And it's kind of like interesting stuff. If you go there into internet and Google for Guckel generator, you're gonna have a website that will generate for you query. You don't need to learn anything. It just basically will do everything for you. The only thing you need to remember that if you have, if you have ad block enabled, you might not be able to access this page and it will return you 503 error or something like this. So this is the query language and this allow us to generate the query what we wanted to get. We will come back to this later. So let's look at the code. We create some query and this is uh, SQL based stuff. So first of all, we define what we want to get in select and it's going to be campaign ID campaign name. And as you can see, it has dots in it. So there are instances of something like there is a campaign and it has parameters, for example, campaign have settings, name, bidding, budgeting, and all that kind of stuff. There is ad group stuff and ad group also have some parameters like ID and name and also have, for example, tracking template. There is a um, ad group criterion, which is in our case is gonna be the keyword, but not necessarily is a keyword because you might have retargeting, remarketing, audiences, and all that kind of stuff. And there are metrics. Metrics are things like impressions, clicks, uh, clicks or anything like this. And of course, to make the Gakel work like for work for you in a beneficial way, you need kind of to learn a bit of which one are which. But at the beginning, you can just simply use the website I showed. Then you decide. Then you define from where the data is coming to your website. For example, from uh, keyword view or from campaign view or from wherever else. 
Then there are filtering, and this is defined whether you want to look at the campaigns that have enough cost, or if they have enough clicks, or uh, what period of time you're looking at. Do you want to last seven days, or do you have some specific time frames you wanted to query? And uh, basically, this is one of the most important stuff here. And the last two things, as in classic SQL, is order by, if you wanted the ordered query, which is not necessarily uh, true because you can just load it into Pandas, and the limit. And the limit will define how much stuff you will get from account. And this is, for example, one of the popular questions, how to make this script work for more than 50 keywords. All you need to do is just to get rid of this line or make this line way bigger. Of course, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's the limitation. You can read it only into internet. But for majority of the accounts, uh, you, you will not hit the limit anyway. Then what we do, we take this query, which contains all the information in a formal way of what we want to get from Google Ads, and we push it to the GA service search stream. So there are several things of this. There is search, search stream, and search batch. And there are different ways of getting data from Google Ads. I would say I'm not a developer and I don't care actually. I know that search stream works for me. For those of you who actually develop stuff, you need to go there and look at which one uh, serves you better. But in general, for me, for those that do not do this all the time as a main work, uh, just pick search stream. This is the most efficient one. It will download any size of the query in general uh, in a continuous flow to your, to your computer. Then, um, this one uh, is not important for the, for the moment, but what it does actually uh, contains, it helps us to work with the match types. And at this point of time, like at this point of time, the query, the result is already on your computer. So we downloaded uh, everything we need on your computer, which actually happens like here, which is amazing because compared to majority of other cases, uh, you don't really need to, to handle anything. It just, it's just, it's already there. So the only thing we need to is to get what came to us from Google and to some kind of work with it. So what we have here, we have try uh, for batch in response and for row in the batch. So there is a uh, response, is a huge package, like a DHL coming from Amazon. And inside it, there are several batches, smaller packages, but still they're packed. And then we take this pack out of the big box and inside this pack, there is, a, there is a row of results. So each row represents whatever is the granularity. And in that case, we're working for keyword view, so it's gonna be each row is its separate keyword. So it might sound confusing but when you look at the data, it actually like exactly like downloading Excel. But because you might download like a million keyword size account, it not always can come with one single Amazon package. It's imagine you'd like, ordering 50 different things from Amazon. So it will come in different batches inside different batches um, will be a lot of different rows. This is why we have four batch in response, four row in batch results. And each row as in Excel represents something for, uh, it represents some parameter. So uh, what's interesting about the Google ads library in Python is that you can address the data inside the row exactly the same way as you address it in, in here. What I mean is, for example, this is a campaign name, and if I wanna get campaign name, all I need to say is campaign name equals row dot campaign name. And if I wanna, for example, get ad group criterion criterion ID, I can say that ID equals, sorry, row dot ad group criterion dot criterion ID. So you don't need to learn what these parameters are and you will not be able to just like look at the possibilities. You just need to copy whatever you have here and use it there. So in this example, in this example that we take from the official library, what we see here, what's happening first, the author creates the campaign variable and it says, says saves everything of campaign that we know to the campaign variable. And later on in the code, it uses campaign.name and campaign.id. And this is also another way of doing this because if you say campaign equals row.campaign, that means that now we can just say, for example, campaign name, print campaign name, and it will work. So 
all of this is actually unnecessary. It's just to show you how you can take data from the row variable. Um, and, but I think it's pretty nice and self-explanatory. This is the case when we need to decompose and take the data about the keyword match type. So what's happening there when you get your Amazon <laughs> package uh, and it contains all the stuff in it, um, not every single stuff there is handled in a way that it's going to be used. So some of the stuff uh, comes with uh, different parts and you need to bring these parts together to make it work. For example, stickers can be separated or the charger is not complete. And this is what happens here. So we get uh, some weird stuff for the match types and we need to convert it to things like exact, phrase or broad, something that we as humans can understand instead of one, two, three, what it actually comes in. So this is why we use the enum type to convert it. The cool thing, you don't need, really need to think about it. It's just, this is a rare case of something like this happening. It's always impossible to find the uh, stuff in the internet and we'll cover this. But even like if it's not the case, you can just basically learn what this one, two or three means. And then they just print it. And this is literally the whole code, which majority of this code is printing and the report SQL query. The actual handling with API is happening here. Sorry, here we create the GA service, we load our credentials, then we ask for the response and then we just print the result. Like this is how easy it is when you know what to do. But of course, the trick is that you need to know what to do, which is difficult. So here, another one is exception. So this is the something that they created, the, the people uh, that created this library, is to show you that sometimes the data that comes to, your, to you is not correct and it can contain errors. And this error have a special type, which is Google Ads exception. And in most of the cases, it should not be the problem. So it only should be the problem when the internet connection is dropped or some of the data that you requested just doesn't exist or you don't have an access to this data. But unless you hit that, and if the, you hit this, you will have the, uh, the error and it will show you what's happening and the, the program will stop. For example, if you request the wrong ID that you don't have an access to. But unless you, you do this specifically, you will not use this code. So everything is going to just work. And that's all. That's, that's, that's how, it e how easy it is. So uh, let me show you how to work with Gakkel, as I promised to you. So interactive Google Ads Query Builder, builder. I will put the link below, but if you just need to, to look for it, it's GAQL Generator, and this is gonna be the first link. Again, don't forget to disable the ad blocker. So first of all, you need to define, when you, re when you request a report from Google Ads, you need to be absolutely sure what you're requesting. And this is usually when 95% of problems happening. When I work with people and explain this to them, I realize that people want to get report, but they have no idea what this report should contain. Like, is it going to be like campaign information, account information, or maybe keyword information? So first of all, you need to think of what this is going to be about. And for example, I want to go for campaign level information then it's going to be campaign. Then you can take a lot of fields about the campaign, which contains first build strategy, bidding strategy, sorry, then the campaign stuff, for example, uh, campaign ad serving optimization status, which is a setting, but it also have, for example, campaign.name, which I just need to find. So for example, campaign ID, let's just save it for now. And can I type? No, I cannot. So campaign.name, here it is. You also can get the campaign labels if you want. Let's get them as well. Here it is. And a lot of other parameters that exist on the campaign level. For example, campaign tracking template, you also can get, let's just find it. It's gonna be campaign.t tracking. Here it is. Uh, target impression share, location, uh, tracking URL template. There are some parameters there that you will not directly understand because they don't exist in the same way they exist in the inter interface. So do not try to like, add all the information you can get if you don't know how you're going to use it. It's just useless. If you create the script that will specifically give you the data about whether you have tracking templates uh, on the campaign level or not, then just request this information because that will reduce your learning gap a lot and you will not be a, you will not have to 
you would not have to go through all this stuff each time and like feeling frustrated because you don't feel where you need to start and stop. So then you need to define the filters you're going to work with. Oh, by the way, let's add some metrics. So if you go down, there is going to be metrics and it's going to be, for example, clicks. Let's just stop here uh, or add impressions. Always add impressions. Here it is. Uh, so our campaign is going to contain campaign ID, campaign name, and you can, by the way, get the data of it. Oh, no. Please don't tell me that I cancelled some fil filters. Campaign ID. Yeah, I cancelled campaign ID. Okay, the interface here is not always the best. Here it is. So I'm going to I'm gonna have campaign name, campaign URL tracking template, campaign ID, and I'm going to have clicks and impressions for this. Then the second thing you need to do is to define for which period of time in which cases you want to work with. For example, I can say that campaign name should contain something and that would be campaign name uh, like and then I can say, for example, search or I don't know, whatever, BMW, something like this. But uh, I don't I just want to get all the campaigns that have any clicks. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go for metrics and I'm going to say uh, let's say impressions. Let's find this um, metrics, search clicks, click through rate, clicks. Let's just click more than one click. And the second thing I need to say is when. And when is not a metric. When is actually a dimension that is on the very bottom and it contains segment date. And date is more than, let's just say, be uh, no, no, not between, but during. Uh, last month and you also can say if you want to sort your query I don't really want to sort and then we're gonna have a limit size so it's not necessarily to have one but the thing is here's my query and if all I need to do is just copy this paste it here and that's gonna be enough so this will get me the data on my laptop and it's not going to work perfectly because I need to handle the result and to show it in some way and it does not contain the same metrics as it used to be. But I will show you how to do it in the next video. Subscribe to this channel, leave your comments below, ask me questions. And if you need any support, uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn, you can reach me in the private DM or on my email or wherever you can find me. And thank you, thanks for watching.